from the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, bringing you data-driven insights from the Cube and ETR. This is Breaking Analysis with Dave Vellante. Microsoft's new financial disclosures include changes to the way it reports Azure metrics. The company said the change was done to better align Azure with consumption revenue and by inference more closely align with how AWS, the leader in cloud computing infrastructure, reports its metrics. The accounting change removed certain mature, slower growth revenue streams and consequently raised the growth rates for Azure. It also had the effect of increasing the AI services contribution within Azure. While this was reported and often applauded in the media and in financial circles, what wasn't widely highlighted is that while such a change increases growth rates, by definition, it reduces the size of the Azure business and its resulting revenue market share. Regardless, in our view, Microsoft is comfortable that the future AI revenue contribution within Azure combined with both higher growth rates and a greater AI contribution will foster more investor confidence and enthusiasm over time. And they're probably correct. Hello and welcome to this week's theCUBE Research Insights powered by ETR. In this breaking analysis, we review the changes Microsoft made to its financial reporting with a special focus on Azure impacts. We share how it affects our cloud data and we'll share some thoughts on Microsoft's AI reporting and how to interpret that. Now, by way of review on August 21st of this past year in 2024, Microsoft released its Form 8K, which included a link to an investor presentation. In this presentation, Microsoft revealed some significant changes to its reporting metrics. Our interest for today's breaking analysis is on the Azure portion of Microsoft's business, which is highlighted here in red. Microsoft made two important disclosures in this new mapping as it pertains to Azure. First, it is removing EMS, which stands for Enterprise Mobility and Security, and also taking out Power BI per user pricing. Previously, as shown on the left-hand side of this chart, these products were included in Azure. On the right-hand side is the new reporting. Now we highlight AI services because it seems to be missing. And later in this discussion, you'll see specific new guidance around AI services and its contribution to Azure. So while certain AI services by implication have always been included in Azure, Microsoft on its earning call, it, it calls out, it specifically identifies the contribution within Azure of these AI services. So we felt it was useful to shine a light on this fact and we put a question mark there for reasons that you'll see in a moment. Now these changes are material to Azure as shown here. In particular, by removing EMS and Power BI per user revenue from Azure, its resulting growth rates increase. Note that the second row under investor metrics, quote, Azure and other cloud services year on year revenue growth. The line shows revenue and revenue in constant currency for fiscal year 24 in the dark blue and the restatement in lighter blue. Microsoft's fiscal year ends in June, by the way. But note that, for example, the quarterly growth rates in fiscal year Q1 jumped from 29-28% to 31-30% respectively. And in fiscal year Q4 account for a five-point increase in Azure growth. And note, in the next line, AI services, a point contribution to Azure, it jumps from three, six, seven, eight, and six points on the left-hand side to five, nine, 10, 11, and nine points on the right-hand side. Now the last numbers on each side, six and 9%, don't be confused, these represent full year averages, not a decline in the contribution. Now, as we said at the top, investors are excited by the new disclosure because it shows higher growth rates and a larger contribution from AI. Everybody's excited about more AI, but it also serves to lower Azure's overall revenue because it removes those items that we mentioned before. So Azure estimates and its consequent market share reported by most analysts have been overstated for years. But for those paying close attention, including the Cube Research and some others, let's go back to June of 2023. Leaked court documents 
from the Activision trial suggested that Microsoft's IaaS business was significantly lower than people realized. Shown here as 34 billion for the fiscal year 2022, which ends in June of the year 2023. Now, many media outlets reported on this fact, but few firms adjusted their numbers to reflect this change. But you may recall that in July of that year, we dramatically lowered our Azure estimates and the resulting revenue share to reflect these changes. And the reduction was significant, resulting in a 25% decrease in some years as shown here, highlighted in the red boxes. And the impact over time of these changes was significant as we show here, for example, it took our historical Azure estimates from 2020, which we revised somewhat since uh, last July. We took those down nearly 8 billion and our 2023 figures down by more than 20 billion, which probably roughly equates to the size of that EMS business. So we already had taken that out. This had the effect of lowering Azure's market share by seven to eight points and by extension, increasing AWS's lead. So when you look at this from a summary perspective, you can see that Azure is now the fastest growing of the big four clouds. And these figures reflect the revised metrics that Microsoft provided in its disclosures, including its expectation for accelerated growth in the second half of its fiscal year. This puts our Azure estimates at nearly 69 billion. Now that's higher than the Wells Fargo report, which came out, which had Azure's run rate at 62 billion. Of course, that's run rate. So the Q2, calendar Q2 times four equates to 62. Ours is including the full year. So naturally it would be higher, but our feeling is we're still a little bit higher than the Wells report. Now let's zoom out a bit and think about the impact here. Microsoft has removed some legacy, slower growth businesses. So this juices its Azure growth rates. And we know that Azure is the engine of Microsoft's platform strategy with AI making an increasingly important contribution to both its revenue and market capitalization. Now you may recall at one point we estimated that nearly a trillion dollars of Microsoft's market cap, that increase in, in that COVID year was AI related or post COVID year, sorry. So let's look at some ETR data, which measures account penetration of AI. So here we show the major cloud players in their AI penetration within 168 accounts. Microsoft has a commanding lead with respect again to account penetration. That's how ETR measures this. More than two thirds of the accounts in this smaller sample are using the Azure OpenAI service and more than half are using the Azure AI Studio and the Azure ML service. These three outpace all others. Amazon Bedrock is showing penetration that is rapidly catching up to SageMaker in terms of accounts using the product in this sample, with a notable 21% planning to evaluate Bedrock. Now Google's Vertex AI is also showing strong intentions for evaluation at 21%, same as Bedrock. And overall, we see Google's AI momentum closing the gap with AWS. We're not showing that data here, but other data, other survey data for a much larger sample, almost 1800, shows this. This is largely due to the quality of Google's AI and it's a strong data story with BigQuery and other data platforms. IBM is showing up in the survey with both OpenShift AI and Watson X and Oracle also showing strength. Anybody who shows up in this chart, we consider to be relevant because they're, they're actually contributing, showing you know, significant contribution that's meaningful to the AI piece. So why is this important? It's because AI is what's driving valuations right now and Microsoft's reporting both highlights its AI contribution to Azure and its overall accelerated growth rates for both Azure and the higher contribution for AI. We believe this will continue to be an increasingly important metric in the coming quarters. But as is always the case with company reporting generally and Microsoft specifically, it's unclear what its reporting really tells us. So I want to unpack that a bit. Here's a chart that quotes Microsoft CEO, CFO Amy Hood on the last earnings call. She says that, quote, Azure growth included eight points from AI services where demand remained higher than our available capacity, end quote. So we have two takeaways here. One is the contribution from AI at nearly 10% is becoming meaningful. And two, 
what exactly does that mean? So we highlight here the AI services point contribution to Azure. Note that this update, Microsoft's change in accounting and reporting, note that that update came after that last earnings call. And we highlight in red the changes that we discussed earlier. Notice that they are significant and in the quarter ending June of 2024, accounted for 11% of Azure's growth. So above, well above that 8% that number and above that 10% magic number. But the question is how to interpret that? So we took a stab at a couple of scenarios shown in the bottom of this chart. The percent contribution of Azure growth is shown in the blue. And then the next line shows the quarters and the full year. These are calendar years, not fiscal years, by the way. That's followed the next row by the Azure revenue estimates by quarter. These are our estimates. Microsoft doesn't report Azure revenue. And then we show the year on year growth by subtracting the previous year's revenue from the current year. We then tested two scenarios. Number one, the first one is we took the prior year's number for Azure revenue and applied the AI contribution percentage to the figure to derive the Azure AI revenue growth. So you can see, or revenue contributions, you see there, 25, 194, 477, that's in millions, et cetera. The next line uses a second methodology, which takes the current year and then subtracts the previous year and then applies the AI percentage to that. Now, you could say both are potentially value, valid calculations, but notice the difference in absolute dollars. In scenario one, Azure's quarterly AI contribution crossed a billion dollars in the March quarter of 2024. Again, calendar year. In, in scenario two, it doesn't hit a billion dollars until maybe next year. Okay, and there may be other ways to interpret this statement from A.B. Hood. We've requested a clarification from Microsoft Investor Relations, but haven't heard back yet. You know us, we'll keep asking. So just summarizing what we're looking out for um, in the coming quarters and months ahead and even years ahead. Look, earnings season is coming. The big three clouds all report around the same time. Uh, I believe it's early November this year. So we'll be looking for Amazon, Google and Microsoft, not necessarily in that order. Alibaba comes later. Um, and so once we get those, that data in, we'll update all of this and report back to you. Microsoft's reporting is going to force, we think, other vendors to disclose, particularly the AI revenue. This is where Microsoft's basically laying down the gauntlet saying, we are the leader in AI. We got out first with Gen AI, and we're going to maintain that lead with our open AI investments and our partnerships. And this will force vendors, other vendors' hands to disclose what their AI looks like. And of course, guidance that AI guidance is going to be a key indicator of interest for investors and customers. And as always, those definitions are going to be varied and fuzzy, but it's really important because that's what's driving valuations in many cases. So we're going to use survey data and anecdotal conversations to guide our estimates, and then we'll report back to you. Okay, that's it for now. How do you see Microsoft's Azure business? What do you make of the changes? Uh, do they mean anything to you? And if so, what? And what about the contribution from AI? How do you interpret Microsoft CFO statements? Let us know. Okay, thanks to Alex Myerson and Ken Schiffman on production and in our podcasts. Kristen Martin and Cheryl Knight help get the word out on social media and in our newsletters. And Rob Hof is our editor in chief over at siliconangle.com. Remember, all these episodes are available as podcasts. Wherever you listen, just search Breaking Analysis Podcasts. I publish each week on thecuberesearch.com and siliconangle.com. You can email me at david.vellante at siliconangle.com or DM me at dvellante or comment on our LinkedIn posts and please do check out etr.ai. The survey data just keeps coming. Best survey data in the enterprise tech business. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE Research Insights powered by ETR. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Breaking Analysis. Thank you.